That's that was, just tacky. That was very tasteless. Yeah. Low class. Low very class. much so. I wish we hadn't even gave him, like, I wish you hadn't even gave that any shine. Yeah, I just wanted to know. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's just so, so sad that people are, like, man, I'm hurt for Nipsey Hussle and his family. Okay, so um, we actually are, have already started the show, but I'm going to go ahead. We haven't played the drop, so let's go ahead and get into these uh, topics. News and Noteworthy. The Shiznit. So there's a man who said he was a missing child named Timothy Piven. Uh, he's been charged with lying to the FBI. Well, this story is crazy. Dude. Yeah, it is. Did you see it when it first came out? I didn't. I didn't see it until you posted it. Okay. I, I was not aware of it. Yeah, so, me either. I saw this story on the news on my way to work one day where they're like, oh, this, you know, this woman had killed herself, had taken her kid out for a nice day out, then killed herself, slashed her wrist in a hotel and to- wrote a suicide note saying he's safe, but he won't ever be found. Right. So, this day in Kentucky, this kid had been who had been arrested cut claim to be this missing child. He had been kidnapped. He'd been helping these. He, first, he said like these two muscle bound, these muscle dudes, and they had used him as a sex sex slave and for all years yeah. and abused him for years. Yeah. So and he's they, supposed to be fourteen at this time. Yeah. Turns out it's all a hoax because they had done a swab with his consent. Yeah. In the hospital. He he wouldn't agree to fingerprints, but he agreed to DNA for some <laughs> weird reason. <laughs> I'm like, don't you know like DNA tells them more than your fingerprints? Yeah. Like, especially if you was a child, your fingerprints probably not on file right. nowhere. But you know why? Well, oh, cuz he's a, oh, yeah. cuz mm-hmm. he's a He's an ex-con, right? So his fingerprints are on oh, record. Right. Ah. So he's like, he's like, they won't have, they may not have my DNA, but they definitely got my fingerprints. Got it. <laughs> he's got like, it. I remember that day. Not <laughs> only that, he tried to be a fourteen-year-old. He's like twenty-three. Right? Twenty-three, uh. saying that he's a fourteen-year-old, and he does <gasps> not look like he's not passing. <laughs> it's not like he's like you know. Oh my God, Jason Priestley playing you know uh, Brandon Walsh or something. Right. <laughs> like nah, nah, motherfucker, you don't look fourteen. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow. Crazy. I would believe How he was thirty four be? before I would believe he was fourteen. Uh, man, <laughs> I don't know, but that that is pretty stupid. A sex slave. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, the uh, the real uh, Timothy Pitson is somewhere we still don't know. Well, the thing is, they they ran his they ran they ran his DNA, and it came back that he and he held on to that he was Timothy until they said, "Look, motherfucker, we ran your <laughs> DNA. You are not Timothy. Give it up. You are not the farmer." And it's like we know who you are. You're you know so and so, right? Yeah, R- Rennie, and uh, he was a recently uh, paroled ex convict. That's a damn shame. <laughs> that is a fucking he shame. He confessed to seeing the show, uh, the, seeing the story on 2020 and decided <laughs> that he would rather, uh, he, he would give up, he wanted to give up his identity, <sighs> assumed identity of Timothy because his family and father seemed so caring and his father, uh, the, the convict, he said that if he'd gone missing, his father wouldn't give a damn. Oh, wow. I'm, so, I'm not buying that part of this. He a grown ass he, man. You, you're not believing that he said it, or you're not believing that that is true, or what part of it? How you mean? You're not I I believe that some it might be somewhat true, and he might have said it, but I just like I feel like that just sound like extra. He's trying to get some sympathy, mm-hmm, um, a bullshit excuse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah, because he, he. I mean, we are. He clearly has some ulterior motive. Issues. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sound like he's not really trustworthy to begin with. No, he's not. not no, at all. <laughs> absolutely not. He's trying to pass himself off as ten years younger. And mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm sorry. This is I don't mean to make this racial, but white people don't age as well mm-hmm. as black people. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like you, no. <laughs> mm. Ain't that true? No. Ah, oh, no. This is a damn shame. And I re- again, when this story first broke, I remember sharing it with a woman at work. I was like, "Isn't this amazing? If what if this is really him?" And to answer your question, Dijon, no, we don't know wh- where the real Timothy is. Still, it's just like his mother said that he's never been found. So. I mean, it looks like she provided for him before he, you know, made made arrangements for him. Or she drowned him somewhere. Well, we, we, yeah. Well, I mean, she 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 she's dead, and it, it didn't say that she committed suicide, but it kind of felt like suicide to me the way the story is go. So I'm like, if she's gonna commit suicide, why not just tell the truth? Why are you gonna lie about it? So I figured she, you know, found a safe place to stash him. Just because it was so ambiguous. He's in a safe place, but you'll never find him again. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, this bitch killed him. <laughs> he did. No, I don't know. But this is crazy. This, uh, what is his name, Rennie? Yeah, he yeah, should Rennie. He should go back to jail forever. I believe he oh, will he is. Be. <laughs> oh, he is. Because, I mean, you know, he's on parole. 
Oh wow! Oh, yeah. So he can't even keep he, it that, together. That's a viol- any crime violates your parole, right? And they're charging him for this, so right. he will be going he back lied to jail. To, he lied wow. to the Fed. Yeah, that's a crime. And he crossed state lines so. to commit a crime. <laughs> so and they, so they, you know, of course, the rest of the article was talking about how you know the same, you know, the whole Jussie. Yep. The whole Jussie syndrome, how this mm. takes away from resources and diverts energy from real, you know, real crimes. And so they make to, an example out of him. And too. not to mention, it's, it's horrible for the, the family of this Timothy person right. who, who, are, who might be looking for him. Right. Still you know, hoping. Exactly. Have hope. Right. So that put to put them through that emotional roller coaster. Yes. You know what this remind me of? What? Did you ever see Candle Shoe? Never heard it's of that. It's a Disney movie. Mm-hmm. Jodie Foster was in it. Mm-hmm. From the seventy, yeah, I guess if Jodie Foster was in, it. yeah, it's old. <laughs> yeah, it's old. And she was, but she, she plays this girl. Uh huh. This guy finds her on the street and sends her to this house to con this family into believing she's this long lost heiress. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's been done so many times. Yeah, yeah. The, the missing kid, and then somebody comes back and claims to be that missing kid, and is is it just they almost get it, the but last, then they get discovered within the last four years. I want to say there's been like three or four. Uh, those those uh, titles, it's a whole series based on that. Mm. So, yeah, well, that's, that's crazy. <sighs> Shit, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So we have a teen who was fatally shot after knocking on the wrong door in Atlanta. This just makes me mad. Now you say, Dino. Well, that's not news, really. I mean, unfortunately, we've heard stories like this all the time. Yeah, we have. But you know what's usual? Usually, it's a a black kid knocking on the door of a white person, mm-hmm. and the white person. Uh, uh, shooting the, the 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 black here for no reason or little reason, but this time it was a black man. It was a black man that did it this time. I have a clip. Let's play the clip. A teenager in Atlanta knocked on the wrong door and he got killed for it. That's according to police, who say the victim had just moved to the apartment complex and didn't really know his way around. It happened Friday night. Police say Daryl Bynes confronted 19-year-old Amari and Banks and shot him to death. A witness says the victim literally begged for his life. Bynes is now charged with murder. What if you're going hiking? What if we take a shortcut? There were other uh, circumstances in this, t- too. Like, I know that um, I'm not saying that this guy got, should should have shot this kid. But didn't he have, like, his car was broken in or stolen recently? They, and yeah. He, he, they, actually, I think the house had been burglarized recently. Okay. As, well. as a matter of fact, in this next clip, we have the cousin of the of the of the shooter who who is explaining the 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 circumstances police say that a teenager knocked on the wrong door at his own apartment complex now he's dead the teenager had just moved to the apartment off fairburn road channel 2's lauren posen reports in southwest atlanta on why the accused shooter's family says he fired in self-defense Father, he has five kids he was literally protecting his family they truck has been stolen this week right now that's all they're trying to do is protect their family. Michaela Johnson didn't want us to show her face, but says she's the cousin of 32-year-old Daryl Bynes. He's charged in killing 19-year-old Omarion Banks at the retreat apartments off Fairburn Road. This young woman, who also didn't want us to show her face, says she heard the gunshots. I seen him running around the corner, and all you heard was him saying, I'm sorry, it was the wrong door. Police say who she saw was Banks, who lived at this apartment complex with his girlfriend. Banks had just been dropped off by a lift. This is where the lift driver dropped off the victim right here. But the victim actually lived here. And you can see how similar Looks these the buildings same. look. I was about to say, did Banks they change? just called his girlfriend, saying he was pulling up and to open the door. But he ended up at Vine's door. So he pleaded for his life. He was like, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the dude shot him. Police say Vine shot the teen from his balcony as he was coming down the stairs trying to get away. Johnson says her cousin only fired at Banks in self-defense. Vines is expected to go before a judge tomorrow in a jail courtroom. In southwest Atlanta, Lauren Posen, Channel 2 Action News. Okay, a couple things. Uh, one, let me explain to uh, the listeners who couldn't see. the. It's a... Uh, um, like they're like uh, kind of like roll houses or apartments, and there's several different units that are made identical, you know, cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. Like they show a picture of the kid's actual apartment, and then they show the kid of the apartment, the the picture of the apartment, and it didn't even look like the camera moved. <laughs> it looked exactly the same. Exactly the same. I thought it was. I was like, wait, what? So you know, it's a very easy mistake to make, even if it's broad daylight, even if you've been living there for 20 years, but. Factor in the fact that the kid, it was late at night and the kid just moved there. 
you know, and all he did was knock on the door. Right. So and I don't he know. shot him from the balcony. And I, I get that this guy was re- recently victimized and may have Maybe. been victimized because I don't know. If, I don't believe that was his cousin. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Didn't want to show their face. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, in, in any case, whether he was or wasn't, this like, come on now, you you got to be more responsible than that when you using deadly force on somebody. Shoot Thank from you. the balcony. You know, the balcony. The way. And, well, yeah, the guy is on the stairs saying, "I'm sorry." What like self defense? What kind of self defense? What were you defending? Exactly. You were so much in fear that this person was going to come into your house and take something from you, but they apologizing to you and running away. And then I'm looking at the pictures, just just judging by the pictures, it looks like he had 100 pounds on the kid. Easy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 19 years old. Yeah, yeah he was a, a, like a thin, you know, normal. Like a little, not, like a not, knock me kid. Not, not, uh, not uh, intimidating looking at all. No, Raj from what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> looking like a very, very... Uh, <laughs> Square kid, very you know, much decent kid, just like knocking on. Oh, you know, sorry, wrong, you know. And he's on the phone with somebody, right? Facetiming with his girlfriend. Like, well, how are you threat that threatened that you're gonna kill him? Like, I don't know. That's crazy. I feel like he was just so gung ho to shoot somebody yeah, for yeah. to vi- right? if if something right. did happen to him or his truck or his part. He was looking for that much vindication that he killed that little boy, Maybe. and I feel so sad. That's so hurtful. Maybe he's just an asshole. He, yeah. Maybe. That, that too. Know. That too. I, again, I don't believe that was his cousin. I don't believe that second witness that didn't want to show their face. Yeah. That, that actually sounded like Char. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's where she went when she left the show <laughs> she went to, to Atlanta. <laughs> Real quick, though. Let's get that. Oh That's hilarious. God. Don't trust either of them. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm his cousin. Don't show my face. <laughs> So have you guys heard about, there's been a couple of plane crashes, both Boeing planes that uh, crashed recently. Yes. Well, they came out with the report of why they think this is happening, and it's not not looking good for Boeing. Yeah. I hate the word think. But, uh... I think they they keep saying that they think. On this, either. Here we go. Here's the clip. There is a big development tonight in the investigation into the crash of a Boeing 737 MAX 8 jet. The company today admitted a faulty sensor was a major factor in the crash of an Ethiopian air flight, as well as a crash in Indonesia last October. 346 lives were lost in those two accidents. Chris Van Cleve is following this. We're deeply saddened by, and we are sorry for the pain these accidents have caused worldwide. For the first time, Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg is acknowledging that the flight control system on the 737 MAX may be to blame in both deadly crashes. It's our responsibility to eliminate this risk. We own it and we know how to do it. The Mia culpa followed the release of a preliminary report into the crash of Ethiopian Flight 302, which shows striking similarities to the Lion Air crash in October. Within 44 seconds of Flight 302 taking off, a sensor malfunctioned, activating the anti-stall system MCAS two minutes into the flight. 20 seconds later, it went off again, putting the plane into a dive. The pilots were able to pull up some before turning MCAS off, as Boeing instructed. But it was too late. The plane was losing altitude and gaining speed. The pilots were unable to regain control of the aircraft. About 30 seconds before the end, they turned the system back on. MCAS fired again, putting the plane into a 40-degree nosedive that reached 575 miles an hour. With an MCAS failure such as they suffered, the nose pitching down radically multiple times would create uh, literally the most difficult situation I can imagine in an aircraft. 24-year-old Sammy Stumo was one of the eight Americans killed on Flight 302. Obviously, this could have been prevented, and that's what makes me cry. Sammy's family announced a lawsuit today against Boeing. This is not an accident. This is something that could have been prevented and should have been prevented. Boeing believes it has a software update that fixes the issues with MCAS, but during the testing of that update, they found an issue with how it integrates with other systems. That's going to take a couple of more weeks to fix before the FAA can begin its approval process. Jeff? Still sounds like Boeing has a lot of explaining and work to do here. Chris, thank you very much. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now, see, he mentions the FAA at the end, and I think they're partially responsible for this, too. Now, it's not entirely their fault because they are one of the government offices that have been affected by this, like, this notion of, like, the first the, the, the government shut down mm-hmm. and making these uh, government uh, offices smaller. 
Mm. They also they're one of those branches or one of those offices of the government that they've had when they've had personnel that have left mm -hmm. like your job sometimes, Dino. Yeah, they just don't fill the position. Yeah. Mm. So they're understaffed and overworked. And so things like this, because I just I just read about this. They knew that the engine that was in it also not only.